So let's deal with the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Okay, so basically, the external female genitals are collectively referred to as the vulva, and the mons pubis or the mons veneris, also referred to as the veneris mons, is a part of fatty tissue that covers the pubic bone. The mon is sexually sensitive in some women. It protects the pubic bone from the impact of sexual intercourse. The labia majora is the outer lips of the vulva and it's made up of parts of fatty tissue that wrap around the vulva from the mons to the perineum. And this labia is usually covered with pubic hair. It contains numerous sweat and oil glands. The labia minora is the inner lips of the vulva. The thin stretches of tissue um, within the labia majora that fold and protect the vulva, uterine, clitoris. The labia minora can vary widely as from the tiny lips that hide between the labia majora to the large lips that protrude. So both the inner and the outer labia are quite sensitive to touch and also to pressure. You know, the clitoris is not very clear over here, but it is an oval between the top of the labia minora and the clitoral hood. And um, it's just a small body of spongy tissue that is highly sexually sensitive. So only the tip of the gland of the clitoris shows externally, but the organ itself is elongated and it branches into two forks. The cura is called a cura. It extends downward along the rim of the vaginal opening toward the perineum. So it's much larger than most people think it is. It's about four inches long on average. So the clitoral gland or the external tip of the clitoris is protected by the prepuce. In the female, we just say clitoral hood and it's a covering of um, tissue similar to the foreskin of the male penis. So during sexual excitement, the clitoris may extend and the hood retract to make the clitoral glands more accessible. On some women, the clitoral glands is very small, others have very large clitoris, and that hood um, doesn't completely cover it. So here, the uterus is not very clear, but I think we'll move on to see a better picture. The um, urethra is opening. Um, the opening to the urethra is just below the clitoris, and it's not related to sexual reproduction. It's just a passage of urine, just like in men. The urethra is connected to the bladder, and it's because in ladies it's so close to the um, anus, the women should always wipe themselves from front to back to avoid infecting the vagina and the urethra with bacteria. So basically, the perineum is just a short stretch of skin starting from the bottom of the vulva and extending to the anus. And the perineum in women sometimes tears during um, birth to accommodate the passage of the child, as what we normally call episiotomy. Some physicians may cut the perineum preemptively on the grounds that the tearing may be more harmful than a precise capital incision. But some statistics show that um, such cutting is in fact, um, like, in fact, increase or um, the potential for infection. So, yeah, it's up to you. But I think um, the scapular incision is better than allowing a tearing of the, of the perineum. Okay, so let's go to the vagina. So it's the female organ of copulation and um, it functions to receive the penis during sexual intercourse and also allows menstrual flow and childbirth. The tube is about 10 centimeters long and it extends from the cervix to the introitus as the outside or the vulval area. The wall consists of an outer muscular layer and an inner mucous membrane. So the muscular layer allows the vagina to increase in size to accommodate the penis and stretch during childbirth. And um, the mucous membrane also protects the protective surface that lubricates the vagina.
So either side of the vagina opening, there is this glands called the Bartholin's glands, and they produce small amount of lubricating fluid. Okay, so basically, that's what we've discussed already. So the vulva. Yeah, that's the collective name of the external female genitals and like I said the most pubic protects um, the pubic bone from the impact of sexual intercourse and the labia majora basically the outer lips the labia minora the inner lips and they are both sensitive to touch and also to pressure okay so I think in this picture I can clearly see the clitoris Ultra and the vaginal opening or the introitus, the perineal area. Okay. So, like I said, it's about four inches long. That's the clitoris, and the clitoral hood covers part of it in some women, in others, it doesn't. Okay. I think there's a clearer picture. The prefuse or the clitoral with the most pubis, the ultra in clinical perineum. That's that's from the um latter part of the vulva to the anus, the vestibule to you see the pudendal cleft to from here. Ultra, like I said, is just connected to the bladder and it's shorter in women than in men. That accounts for frequent urination. Okay. The perineum, like I said, um cases of childbirth sometimes it has to be torn this process called the pisiotomy. Okay, let's move on. Which I've already talked about it. The patholins glands producing some amount of lubricative fluid. And also um the muscular layer in the inner mucous membranes too. Okay. So now let's um tackle the internal reproductive organs. So basically consists of the ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, the vagina, internal um, organs. We'll start with the uterus. We'll start with the uterus. So basically, the uterus has a medium-sized pear shape. It's about um, 7.5 centimeters by 5 centimeters mm, that's the shape and size a sli slightly flat anterior posteriorly and um, oriented in the pelvic cavity with the large rounded parts that's a fundus um, directed inferiorly so um, the parts the body is between the fundus and the cervix and it also has this but the um is most as a slight constriction at the junction of the cervix at the body and the cervical canal internally we have the ostium opening into the vagina okay so i think a picture will be better let me show this okay i think you will see from the picture very well the uterus so always remember it's a pear shaped slightly flat until posteriorly oriented in the pelvic cavity we have the fundus as the upper part which is directed inferiorly and the body and the cervix so the fundus body cervix and is smooth that's a slight constriction at the junction of the cervix and the body and also the cervical canal that's internally and the ostium opening into the vagina so the ligaments that hold the uterus in place we have the broad ligament, the round ligament, uterosacral ligament. So the broad um, ligament, as you can see from the diagram, is the peritoneal fold from the lateral margin of the uterus to the wall of the pelvis and either side also um, and seat ovaries and um, uterine tubes. You can see from the diagram over here, the round ligament is from the uterus through the inguinal canal to the labia majora the uterus sacral ligament um, attaches the lateral wall of the uterus to the sacrum the uterus is normally antiverted the body is tipped that means the body is tipped slightly anteriorly some are retroverted 
again. So the pelvic floor um, muscles provide support inferiorly. So if um, we can weak at childbirth, it leads to prolapse uterus. Yes, uterine prolapse. Okay, so more on the uterus. Let's go on to the three layers. So the uterus, the uterine wall has three layers. It has a serous layer, an inner muscular layer, and a mucous layer. So it has um we clinically call it the perimetrium, myometrium and endometrium. Okay, so always remember this. And the outer layer, the perimetrium is a serous layer. We have the inner muscular layer, which is a myometrium. The endometrium is a mucous layer, but the endometrium, the mucous layer has two other layers. The, it has a thin, deep basal layer and a thicker surface functional layer. So the functional layer, the surface layer is thicker than the deeper. The deeper is thin and the thicker functional layer, um, the thicker functional layer is on the surface, like I said, and a thin, deeper layer. The thin and basal layer is deeper. Okay. So the inner lining of the uterus, that's the endometrium, it grows and changes during the menstrual cycle to prepare um to receive the fertilized egg. It shares a layer at the end of every menstrual cycle if fertilization does not happen and is lined with powerful muscles to push the child out during labor. Okay, so I think we'll talk about the rest of the internal organs. We we'll continue with the cervix. Let me see if we can get a better picture over here. Okay, that is basically what I talked about the uterus and the layers too. Mm. I mean, the three layers, the two. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to the cervix and the ovaries. Uh, let me get this picture. Okay. So let's talk about the cervix. So over here you can see parts of the cervix. The cervix is just the opening into the uterus and is more rigid and less contractile than the rest of the body. And it has less muscle and it's denser. The diameter is from um, 2 to 3 milliliters. That's the diameter. Okay, to the diameter, no, basically 1 to 3 milliliters. Um, millimeters, please. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so it's sometimes plus with me. Um, so I call mucus to protect the cervix from infection. So during ovulation this mucus becomes thin fluid to permit the passage of sperm okay so like i said one to three millimeters it's less contractile it's more rigid less muscle denser and it's just an opening into the uterus it's plugged with cervical mucus to protect the cervix from infection and during ovulation becomes thin um there is it becomes thin fluid just to allow the passage of sperm that's where the mucosa the cervical mucosa plug okay so let's go on to the ovaries the ovaries there are two of them more 2 to 3.5 centimeters centimeters by 1 to 1.5 centimeters okay so mesoverum mesoverum is basically a peritoneal fold that attaches at the ovary that it attaches the ovary to the posterior surface of the broad ligament the two other ligaments associated with the ovaries. We have the suspensory ligament from the mesoverum to the body wall, and the ovarian ligament from the ovary to the superior margin of the uterus. The arteries, the veins, the nerves, transverse and suspensory ligaments, um, they all enter through the mesoverum. So the ovaries basically perform two functions, the production of estrogen and progesterone, and also um, it does the female sex hormones and the production of ova or eggs. At birth, the ovaries
which can contain nearly 400,000 over and after maturing the single egg travels down the fallopian tube and this is a period um, during which a woman is fertile and pregnancy can occur. Okay, let's move on to the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes, also called oviducts, are 10 to 12 centimeters in length and lie on either side of the uterus in the upper border of the broad ligament. So each tube opens into the um, uterus medially by the uterine osteum and laterally into the peritoneum by the abdominal osteum um, close to the ovary. So there are four parts of each tube from the lateral end and namely we have the um, infundibulum, the ampulla, the is, um, isium, the uterine part or the interstitial part, cornea. Okay, so the infundibulum has a funnel shaped extension of the tube as a fimbriated, fimbriated end and that is to capture the ovary released by the um, it is to capture the ovum that has been released by the ovary. Okay, I think we see the various parts in the diagram. Okay, so basically, that's it for the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Okay, in case you have any questions, just type them in the comments below. Bye.